Next on BYUSN, injury impact. How much of an impact is the question for BYU football and the results? And the Ken Palm men's basketball season projection that we would take right now if we could. It's basketball season, believe it or not, as well as football season. Rejoice! Welcome to BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. I am Spencer Linton, alongside a man who never makes excuses, even when he's playing hurt, Jerem Jordan. I am full of excuses. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I have plenty of those. But on today's show, Jaron Hall, one-on-one -on -one with Spence. I'm excited to listen to this. He talks about what's going on, how to uh, end the losing streak. Our Big 12 plus four power rankings, uh, completely unbiased, of course. <laughs> so is BYU last? Yep. Uh, wait for that. Nope. Our men's basketball season projections, we're going to guess at what's going to happen during the year. Record, WCC finish, second leading rebounder. That's going to be Foose first, right? So all that stuff. And who says Fred Warner is still the best linebacker in the NFL? But first, today's headlines. Beginning with this, BYU football head coach Kalani Satake said last night on BYU TV that running back Christopher Brooks remains doubtful for Saturday's game at Boise State, which means more Lopini Katoa and more Miles Davis. Satake also said he's feeling understandable urgency after four straight losses, and he's ready for a new November with some new goals. I just want to be undefeated in November, so here we go. Let's start with this one. Uh, you know, one and zero is what we're aiming for right now, and that's what that's. No, no matter what's happening in the season, we, we're going to learn from the adversity. I told you, we've learned quite a bit, and I, I think I'm done learning now. It's time to start doing some work. No loss November, at least for football. That'd be nice because it was lost October. Ugh. Round one of voting opened yesterday for the Davey O'Brien National QB Award. Jaron Hall is one of 40 candidates on the list. BYU women's soccer drops two spots to number 15 in the latest. Uh, United Soccer coaches poll following a 0-0 draw against number 23 Santa Clara. The Cougars on the road at last place San Diego tonight. And then later at LMU to close out the regular season. I expect two wins. I expect a lot of goals. We'll see what happens with Santa Clara. Listen to tonight's game on the BYU Radio app. New cross-country rankings are out. I know you've been waiting for these. The men stay at two. The women fall a spot to six ahead of the NCAA Mountain Regionals next Friday in Albuquerque. Alicia May Mateo of BYU Women's Golf with her second career win. She hey. three under par in the final at the Miami Hurricane Invite. Not to be confused with Hurricane Utah. No, no, no. This is, this is actual Miami. Yeah. Like South Beach, Miami. Yeah. The team placed fifth in Miami, shooting five under par collectively. They'll resume play in February with the FAU Invitational. So this is a nice way to end the fall season for BYU Women's Golf. Well done. Men's golf is at the St. Mary's Invitational. The Cougars currently in 12th at 28 over par. So some work to do. All rise and shout. It's time for what's trending. And that takes us to the question of injury impact or just an excuse. Did you see Deep Impact? You remember that movie? I have not seen that. Oh, movie. I like that one. You should watch it. It came out around the same time okay. as Armageddon. But anyway. <laughs> All of those uh, Armageddon type Yes, movies. the Y2K, yeah, okay. World's Ending era. BYU football is feeling their own version of Armageddon, Jerem. Mm -hmm. 42 different starters this season, which is tied for third most in the entire country. I believe trailing first place Texas A&M and somebody else. New Mexico. New Mexico, that's right. Yeah. Here's Kalani Satake Crazy. on the challenge of dealing with so many injury setbacks. Unfortunately, we had some injuries, had to replace guys, and that's not an excuse other than our, our we have good depth and good talent, but... Uh, that's hard to replace a lot of the don't want to close my he says it's <laughs> not an excuse but should it be an excuse <sighs> how much have these injuries impacted the results 19 different starters on offense 23 on defense Jerem, what do you think how much of this is impacting BYU's results we don't want to admit it but it has right I right after the game on Friday I tweeted this roster is way more like the UAB team than the Baylor game team right we don't want to. We don't want to point to this and say, "Well, that's why," because we we don't really, um, you know, as a fan base, as as uh, even media to some degree, accept that BYU is four and five for any reason outside of Jaron Hall being unavailable, and he's not been unavailable. He's been available. He's been playing hurt. The only time he doesn't play is when he's literally got concussions where he can't go. If he's got an injured shoulder, which is the case now, he's playing through that, right? This is, but it's legit. 
Like, the fact that BYU has had to play so many different people. Like, number 15 for BYU made a tackle on Friday, and I thought, I don't know who that is. Carter Krupp. It was Carter Krupp, as we talked about, who unfortunately got hurt himself in the game. This is a real deal. So my, my thing is, yes, it absolutely is a legit reason for why BYU is 4-5. and five. Are there more reasons than just that? Absolutely. But I wonder why BYU is getting so hurt. This feels like it's a somewhat consistent. Well, consistency is either it's either consistent or not. So this feels like a consistent thing that we've dealt with uh, over a few years. Last year, not as much. BYU overcame that with the fact that Tyler Algier was healthy. I think if Tyler Algier is on this team, BYU is probably two or three wins better. Um, and he was able to play all year. That was a big deal. Without Jaron question. Hall was not able to play all year. Listen, last year, when you've right? got an NFL running back and an NFL quarterback together, you have double-digit win seasons. That was special against that schedule, right? And the Pac-12 must have been pretty bad or something. I don't know. Uh, but, yes, this has played a factor uh, in how this season has gone. Is there way more to it? Is there coaching decisions? Are there, uh, you know, lack of uh, making a play in a certain moment? Is there, yes, uh, Mason Wake and Caleb Hayes, yes, those moments are like, oh, shoot, that play didn't cost you the game, but that series of moments cost you the game. So that's, that's tough, and those guys have been uh, good um, outside of those moments. But, yes, injuries have played a factor. It's, we'd be naive not to say yes. Do we still expect the team to perform at a certain level despite not being the starters? Yeah. I don't even know if that's fair, though, honestly. I don't even know if that's fair. 42 different starters is a lot. And, frankly, because of injuries, BYU is now moving players midseason positions in some instances from – defensive line or offensive line to defensive line to be backups to shore up yeah. a yeah. lack of depth there yeah. that's a lot of different starters and maybe because BYU plays so many guys and we saw those line change substitutions going not on more okay not anymore but while they were doing that there are just more players on the field so that mathematically means that the likelihood of having more players injured goes up as well so that maybe plays into it a little bit but I mean, we're discussing how much has it impacted the results. I'm going to quantify at least one game for you based on an injury specifically to Jaron Hall. And answer me this. If Jaron Hall practices all week and is not sitting out all week of practice leading up to the Notre Dame game and doesn't shake off the rust in the first quarter, do you believe that BYU wins that game? Because I do. The, the <laughs> offense and Jaron were so out of the norm and looked notably rusty. I mean, just bad, right? Just looked terrible in the first half. Yeah. I feel like if Jaron does not get injured against Utah State, BYU plays at least normal football in the first half against Notre Dame. And this is the old normal when BYU, we felt like BYU was a good team. Yes. They're right right now, one. BYU's not a good team. I feel like that game was significantly impacted by Jaron Hall being injured. I'd certainly like BYU's chance to Spence. I think defensively, you're still letting Michael Mayer have 11 catches sure. on 15 targets. Sure, but, the ball. but maybe you take the lead when it was 23-20 or whatever it was, right, in, in the third when BYU got touchdown, stop, touchdown, stop. Maybe you put another one on the board there and you at least tie the game or take the lead. Well, it's 28-23, so you probably take the lead. Yes. Yeah, I, I like BYU's chances there. I can't say definitively well, they would have won. Listen, listen. If Jaron Hall is in a normal mind frame, okay, that first pass is not intercepted. Okay? I, he, it was like all the rust was coming off collectively in that one throw to Gunnar Romney. You, you can see it coming out of his shoulder pad. <laughs> it, was, it was super weird. Like iron oxide just clearly, spilling out. Clearly in that moment we were like, what in the world? Like, if he he's that okay. hurt, why isn't Jacob Conover playing that, there? That's a fair question. But, like, but still. Like, and I love that Jaron like, fought through and played, but, but does he, him playing – He's obviously a better option than Jacob Connor recording the staff there. I have concerns about uh, BYU does not have two one and out drives if Jaron Hall is a little bit better. Is my is my point. I love one and outs when you score. <laughs> In fact, BYU had a one and out against USF. Oh uh, yep. Pukin, yep. and when we say out, that's not really out. One and score. But yeah, no, I I feel you. I, I feel like he's been a different player. Since he's been injured, he's getting better now, and he looks yes. better, certainly. So After gonna... his interview, I'll show you the numbers of first five versus last four with him. Crazy. There's been a dip since he got hurt against Utah State. So I, I think Again, Notre why Dame would we game... ever schedule Utah State again? Don't do it, Tom. Don't do it. We don't need it. 
and quarterbacks just get hurt. Don't need it. There's at least one. Come at me, Utah State. Let's go. I feel like there's at least one. Like BYU, I like BYU's chances in the Notre Dame game, and maybe you don't go into such a funk after that game. I don't know. At least BYU's 5-4 and four if Jaron Hall does not get injured at Utah State is what I'm trying to say. They are not dealing with a four-game losing streak, and maybe they go and – Beat Liberty or they beat ECU because I don't think BYU better. beats Liberty. Probably not. That was too big of a margin to feel like probably Jared's not swing twenty five points. But I, the Notre Dame game, I pinpointed immediately. It was like, okay, what what type of impact have injuries had on this season, and how is it? How can we quantify it in terms of wins and losses? I point to that game specifically as a huge turning point game with Jaron not okay. BYU loses that game. So I think at worst, BYU is 5-4 and four if Jaron does not get injured against Utah State. Because you lose to Oregon, you lose to Liberty. You just get blown out of the water by get, those I mean, two teams. You, by the way, you Liberty didn't. shoot out to Arkansas. I'm not saying BYU beat I don't the think Arkansas BYU beats Arkansas. Either, I that think that was more about defense. Yes, yes. Well, by the way, Liberty didn't make the top 25 of the college football uh, playoff poll, but they are in the AP poll at 23. But maybe BYU beats ECU. What? Yeah, yeah. Although Aaron Roderick said, no, he's – He's good. There's no – he's taking all the snaps. Like, if you have Christopher Brooks all year, that's been a big thing. And, and frankly, like, you need, pl- you need the main guys to show up uh, and play at a certain level to win. Last year, Jaron Hall was really good, right? Um, there have been games where he struggled a little bit. Some of that is uh, injuries to running backs, and you don't have always the same guy back there. Um, and you can't expect – you know, BYU brought in Chris Brooks to be awesome. I drafted Zach Wilson, who struggled, and Chris Brooks in fantasy – and they've not been great. And that's why I'm 0-9. Like, th- those guys didn't show up. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't draft well, apparently, in that. But, yes, this Saturday, it's like if Chris Brooks is uh, doubtful, okay, Lupini Katoa, got to make it happen. Although in 2019, we weren't like, you know who's going to win this game? Sione Finau is going to run for almost 100. <laughs> and Matt Bushman is going to have two touchdown catches on trick plays. A third-string quarterback is going to lead the charge. Baylor Romney is like, who is this guy? Uh, and BYU broke the, the slump then. They were 2-4, and four, and perhaps they can do it this Saturday. BYU did it with an injured roster in 2019 against Boise State. We need it to rain a little bit mm. to just simulate rain all Rain is in the forecast, the Jaron. Yes. 90% chance of rain on Saturday. And there's a 91% Boise. chance of a BYU win, says <laughs> no one. Okay, topic two. Ken Pomeroy projects BYU men's hoop to finish with a record of 22-7. and seven. Two TBD games in the Bahamas. He's not projecting those. Would you take... That right now. A million percent. Yes, next. <laughs> me, me too, dude. 22. 22 I would take 22 wins seven? right now. Woo. So Ken Palm loves BYU by his – loves BYU. Lives in Salt Lake. A little bit of bias there. I'm just kidding. They're all numbers. They're all numbers. So maybe he knows something that we don't know because you and I, and I feel like a lot of the fan base collectively, are kind of like, I don't know what to expect from this BYU basketball team. That's a freeing feeling. I'll be honest. Like, every year we go into, like, oh, they're going to make the tourney, and I'm typically like, eh, I don't know. 22-7 and seven would okay. put BYU basketball probably in the NCAA tournament. They'd be super bubblicious, yeah. yeah. Like, 22-7, and seven and you're going 11-5 and five in the West Coast Conference? So you're getting two more regular season games, plus at least one in Vegas, you hope, two or three. So it's it's an incomplete assessment. So maybe somewhat. you're like 24-9? and nine? But if he says 22... I'd take 22 right now. And, and just a reminder, coming up, we'll give you our season projections of yeah, all kinds of things, including win and loss records. Zero hesitation because BYU's got some tough games. Like Let's 20, walk through it. 22 and 7 would, su- would suggest that BYU's winning some of these really, really big games. Okay, let's walk through it. Six A games, according to Ken Palm, at San Diego State, which, by the way, is next Friday. Huge game. BYU wins in Viejas. They always do. It's awesome. Uh, USC in the Bahamas. Creighton, that's a return game neutral in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Zags twice. And he has at St. Mary's, B games, at Santa Clara, at San Francisco, who's not going to be as good as they were last year. They were 11 seed in the tourney. Todd Gold went to Florida, new head coach. St. Mary's at home. So there, there are plenty of opportunities here for BYU to get some quad one and two games. And a reminder that next year, uh, BYU is going to hopefully mail it in in non-conference because in conference, every stinking game minus like two will be a, or B. Will be a quad one or quad two, yeah, all which of them is will be just a- Nuts. Yes. They're going to play twice as many quad one and two games as they've uh, typically play. Well, no, it'll probably be like plus five to seven. But it's going to be so difficult. Well, when BYU is playing in their multi-team event, uh, the MTE, we mm. love that acronym, right? They're going to probably get at least one more A 
or B game. The hope is you beat USC and you will get a Kansas or a Tennessee type who are top sure. 10 teams. Like, I think BYU is going to have one more A or B game in that tournament, which yeah. makes it even more difficult. You need top 50 teams at the, uh, on Selection Sunday I mean, to fr- be. Frankly, if BYU fun. wins 20 or more games, I feel like this season has been a massive success. There are so many new pieces involved in Mark Pope's roster. 12 of the 18 are new. Which, is, which makes you know, it's hard to understand or to kind of contemplate of what this team's actually going to yes, do. Yes, I have no idea. How good is Jackson Robinson going to be? No Noel, idea. Wa- Noel Waterman, Rudy Williams has to be really good. Like, Rudy Williams has to be at least second team all WCC. At least for BYU to have a shot. If he's not, BYU's got no shot at even the NIT, in my opinion. Like, he has to be good for them just to make the NIT, let alone the NCAA tournament. Just maybe there is enough camaraderie and belief. Because I'll tell you what, this team will bring energy. Like, I feel like this BYU team will play high energy all game, every game. They have gone all in on disruptive defense, the length, the... The uh, length's legit, by the right? way. Right? Like, they're, they're like five height. dudes with seven-foot yes, wingspans. Yes, we're talking long And there are no seven-footers on the team. Which is pretty wild. Yeah. Okay, so super athleticism, a lot of length uh, in terms of defensive stances and arm length. Not height so much, but just effort and hustle. and cr- It's yeah. going to be ugly. Like, they want to make it ugly and get up and defensively. down the floor. Yeah, and- I wouldn't call BYU overly athletic to me, but I think defensively BYU's got length and they're going to put forth an effort on defense to try and get up and down. Now, BYU's got to be in great shape to do this because to play great defense – and get up in transition is difficult. Sheesh. There's a reason that a lot of teams don't do that. Well, I mean, I'm looking at Atiki Aliatiki and Fusini Traore and Rudy Williams and Jackson Robinson and Gideon George, and all five of those guys scream athleticism to me. Like, so, like, when I look You've at... You've never been convicted of being overly athletic in basketball. True. You know what true. I mean? So I feel like but this there is... But there are some guys who provide a different look. Yes. I yeah. feel it's a little bit different that way. Like, yeah. oh, okay. They want to play crazy defense and get up and down and, and do this? with. It's ambitious. But 20, when has Mark Pope not been ambitious? When is he like, seven? no, no, no. We're, you know what we're really doing? We're going 17 Is Ken Pomeroy's no. metric ambitious here? It kind of feels that Numbers way. Numbers know no ambition. They don't know emotion. They just compute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On the voice of the nation, our question of the day centers back around to football. After BYU has oh, yeah, placed 42 different starters on the field this season. Jackie Robinson's worth. That's third most in all of FBS of 131 teams. Yeah, third number most. three, guys. Good job. <laughs> Woo! How much yeah. should that type of injury scenario impact the results? Parker Peterson on Facebook says, it's hard to have consistency when you are playing so many different guys. And that's just starters we're talking about. The starters are used to playing with each other and know how each other plays, so it's hard to have that consistency with way too many starters. BYU has had little to no consistency in any starting lineup in any game. Like, maybe from game one to game two? Maybe? Once you get hurt, it it changes. Like, Puka was out, Gunner. Like, by the way, Gunner Romney is going to come back next year, redshirt maybe? He's only played in, what, two games? Hopefully he gets a medical exemption. He hasn't used a redshirt. He has a straight-up redshirt if he wants. Gunnar Romney has practiced this week, but we don't know if he's going to play against Boise There are four games left. Redshirt Gunnar Romney. Get a medical exemption. Well, I'm saying straight redshirt. Straight redshirt. If he can get a medical, great, but you don't know that until a ways out. Maybe he just wants to bounce, but, like, he's not an NFL receiver right now. He could become one, perhaps, if he has a healthy season next year. We'll see. Chad It'd be nice in the Big 12 to have Gunner. Chad on Twitter says, all Division I schools deal with injuries. For some reason, they are a bigger deal and excuse for losing at BYU than elsewhere. No. Next man up. It's not next man up when Carter Krupp is in. Like, Carter Krupp didn't practice with the ones last week. So when he he's doing his best. But when, when Kalani Sitake is calling that defense, he's turning and going, was that guy in practice with us to know exactly what we're doing right now? Like, that happens in the sure. games. Can you imagine us just throwing in a host who has never done BYU Sports Nation or even rehearsed with us? It wouldn't be, be executed great. It's going to be great. It might actually be, uh, it might actually be <laughs> rational and on time, as opposed to what we present. Speaking of, BYU basketball tonight, men's host NAIA Ottawa. No, not from Canada. They're from Arizona. In the final exhibition of the preseason, watch and listen to pregame coverage 
beginning at 8 Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Up next, quarterback Jaron Hall tells me the one thing, more than any other thing, this BYU football team needs to do to fix things and start winning again. This is BYU Sports Nation. What is it? I am intrigued. Football in Utah is all about the rivalries. Red, blue, quarterback, wide out, rewards. Wait, what? My style, checking rewards. My style, right. For Mountain America's My Style Checking, it's all about the benefits. No discounts. But it's hard to pick a favorite. No, mobile phone protection. Telehealth. You're going to need that when we're done. I heard that. Let's go. Get the account rivaled by no one. My Style Checking from Mountain America. If you could write a letter to your younger self, what would you say? Ah! Good news. Who are you again? I'm a mental projection from the future that only you can see. I came back to prevent you from becoming a monster. <laughs> Wait, is this a hidden camera thing? This is a story about redemption. Giving someone a second chance to really become their best selves. I guess putting our heads together does make sense. He's not only saving himself, he's actually saving the world. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play. -play. I am Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Earlier this week, I had an opportunity to speak with BYU quarterback Jaron Hall and ask him how in the world BYU fixes things to end this four-game losing streak. Here's that conversation with the BYU signal caller. Jaron, we turn the page to a new month and just maybe a new slate for BYU football as you go into November. How would you define the morale and the atmosphere around BYU's football program right now? Uh, excitement for new opportunities. You know, as, as much of a bummer as it's been the last couple of weeks, um, some tough games, some tough losses. I feel like every week, every Monday, we come back together, we look at the film, you know, kind of get over some of the heartache from Saturday or from Friday, whenever it was and just embrace the opportunities. That's football. Um, that's college football. There's a lot of great teams out there, and there's a lot of talented teams that come up very short. And that's that's been our case the last couple of weeks for whatever reason. And so luckily for us, I feel like we have a group that's, that's hungry enough to, to still make the most out of the situation. What have you discovered about your team and yourself, and more importantly, the issues that are causing the four-game losing streak? We, we just got to be more consistent of, you know, every guy having their best game. I think, uh, I think it really just comes down to relying on each other, um, playing with more confidence, playing with more belief in each other. I just think looking back, you know, to, to some of the best games we had early on in the season and then some of the best games last year, I just think a lot of it was guys were playing excited with each other, um, loving the game, appreciating and having gratitude. And I think there's, there's just been times this year where we've kind of lost that confidence, lost that edge. You know, as we've you know come into our third season of being a really good team, I think we just 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 haven't handled that kind of that mantle well enough to be the the team that a lot of people are coming after. And so we got to get back to having a chip on our shoulder and, and every guy, you know, showing up every Saturday, excited to play and looking forward to playing their best ball. BYU clearly played better against ECU than the previous week at Liberty. Is that enough to get that confidence back, or is it going to take a win to fully reestablish the confidence? There's nothing, nothing can boost your confidence more than a win. I mean, as much as you love to play good, sometimes when you play really hard and you lose, it 
stings even more because that usually comes down to there's only a couple things, you know, that could have changed that game. And that hurts, um, especially coming off of three tough weeks and you get so close and then you come up short again. I think for us, you know, we, we got to get a win under our belt. That's why we play this game as much as we love being here and, and being a part of this culture. I know fans want to win. I know our families want us to win and, and no one wants to win more than us. And that's why we play this game. So, um, you know, when you win, it's, it's, there's no better feeling. And so we just got to handle our business and, and get another win under our belts. The quarterback position by nature is a leader on any football team. What is your role as a leader on this BYU football team? Just keep guys together. Um, keep the focus. You know, the main thing, the main thing is our focus. That's, that's what it comes down to. There's so many distractions nowadays in all of our lives um, as college athletes. So many distractions with, with media being involved now and social media. Just reminding guys that the only, you know, the only influence, the only you know, opinions and, and things that matter come in this building. It's with our family. You know, when you got your own personal family issues and other things, you keep it in your family. You don't go put it out, you know, for your friends or your, your in-laws and other things. You keep it where it's where it's supposed to be with each other. And so for us, it's, you know, that's, that's where you really take these situations, you know, upon yourselves. You keep it here. You keep it in your tight circle with your loved ones. And, and that's our football family. And so, you know, we really just got to band together and, and, and keep each other focused on each other. That's, that's what it comes down to. We play for each other, and, and that's it. And so I think that's just the, the way, you know, you take on that leadership in those situations, I think. It's interesting you bring up that family dynamic because I know your dad, Kalen, is a source of a lot of wisdom and football knowledge for you. So what types of conversations and things are you having uh, with, with your dad in that regard? Yeah, every week it's it's accountability. You know, looking in the mirror, um, being a mature and grown enough, playing this game to understand there's things that you can always do better, especially as a quarterback of any team. You you have the ball every play, and there's opportunities to be better. There's opportunities to to help your team out. When someone doesn't do something, you can make up for that. Um, when you make mistakes, you got to own up to that. Make sure everybody knows that you'll be better. So you know, every game it's about accountability, and then it's also about you know not being too hard on yourself, understanding that it, it is a tough game to play, but. You know, the more you're prepared, the more you love and cherish the opportunities, the better. And, and most importantly, that, you know, there's never any pressure. You know, as long as you're prepared, it's just an opportunity to go out and play a game you've been playing since you were a little kid. Do you feel like you are back to full health at this point? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. So that has nothing to do with uh, anything that has happened, let's say, in the past two weeks. No, no. Fair enough. Jaron Hall with us on BYU Sports Station. Jaron, when you look at the Boise game and the opportunity, that's the word you use, to turn things around, if there's one aspect of the offense that you could change to be a little bit better, what aspect would that be, whether it's third and fourth down conversions, it's the pass game in general, the run game, what do you think? Yeah, getting back to, to being an explosive offense. Um, you know, each week there's some part of our game that's really good. You know, passing is good. Um, like last week, running was really good. Passing was efficient, but we didn't have a ton of explosive plays in the past game. So, you know, as you look over the last two and a half seasons of BYU football, the best offense is when we've been thriving in each of those years was when the run game is hitting explosively and the pass game is playing off of that. And so, you know, now that we've been able to figure out some things in both a pass and the run game, it's time to just put those things together and be a complete offense that's explosive. And that's something we, we harped on a couple of years ago and it became our identity. And, and I feel like we've, um, you know, we've kind of gone away from that. And so that's, that's on us as players is just straining it a couple more yards, straining to finish blocks, um, straining to stay in the pocket and make a throw down the field and then going and catching the ball. And so in every phase of our offense, we just got to be a more explosive team. And I think, I think it'll come. How much do injuries affect your inability per se to be an explosive offense with the likes of Gunnar Romney being out and Puka having missed multiple games. And now we find out that Cody Epps is out for the season. Those type of guys, Chris Brooks is still banged up. How much does that impact your ability to be explosive? Yeah, it, I mean, it definitely has an impact. Um, you know, when guys can't get in their rhythm and they're, you know, they might be in and out, it's tough. But at the same time, you know, we're, we're everybody that steps up is fully capable of filling in and, and making the plays they need to make. You know, it's all about understanding your responsibility, starting with where you line up, um, understanding different looks, spending time in the film room. And if you do that, you can overcome any sort of talent drop off or athleticism drop off. You can overcome those things with just being prepared. And so I think that's something we've done well at, you know, our receivers, especially as we've had, a, you know, some injuries in that room throughout the year. So it, I think, you know, as much as you'd love to have all of your guys together, football is a physical game and, and that's never promised to anybody. And, and most teams don't go a whole year. 
you know, with those rosters filled. So um, it's just about us being prepared, guys being confident. And so I think this week we just got to bring confidence into everybody to just have their best game and, and, and play the way they know they can. What type of opportunity do you see going up to the blue against Boise for the last time in what could be a very long time before the Cougars and Broncos meet up again? Yeah, it's a game that's that's talked about often around here, you know, in the state of Utah, the state of Idaho, right next to each other. It's a game that's always talked about, no different than Utah or Utah State. You know, it's a, it's a rivalry game, um, history between the two teams, and it's always it's always a well fought game. You know, we've we've been on both ends of that since I've been you know, here at BYU and I've seen the good and the bad and I've seen the emotions that go into it. And so, you know, they, they have their rough start. They have some things they work through and they're kind of on the come up now. You know, they're, they've, they've done a good job of getting through some of their adversities through their coaching changes and, and quarterback changes, roster changes, all that stuff. And so now it's, you know, it's our turn. We got to be a team that's, that's mentally tough enough to come out of our, you know, our slump, if you will, at this time. And, and no better way to do that than in a rivalry game where we know there'll be a lot of energy and, and a lot of opportunity. You ran more against ECU than you have in previous games. Was that a concerted effort to do that, or was that more of just a situational thing? And will we see you do that more moving forward? Yeah, it's a little of both. You know, watching their film, they're a big drop team. Um, you know, an out front team, rush three a lot. Love to play some some drop coverages and um, you know cover eight, cover uh, cover eight stuff stuff that we talked about in in, in fall camp. Actually, uh, you're asking me about throwing against those those drop eight teams. But uh, we were just aware that if they wanted to drop out and try to keep a cap on our receivers, then there'd be opportunities to run. And so there were a lot of chances, you know, to, to do that. And I just took the opportunities they gave me, um, you know, to and it's, it's tough for a defense, you know, to do that when you have an athletic quarterback. So when there's opportunities for me to get out and do what I need to, I, you know, um, I try to. And, and, and it worked out Saturday. Out of curiosity, do you feel faster on turf than you do on natural grass? I don't know. I uh, I used to think that. I, I used to think that back in high school. Uh, probably, I mean, probably still. I think so. Yes. Fair enough. On the blue turf at Boise, um, what do you know about their defense and how they're going to try and slow you and the Cougars down? Yeah, physical defense. Um, some returning guys in their secondary that we played against last year. Um, some really good linebackers. Physical defensive front. Um, yeah, just a just a physical team. They play hard, you know, and, and they play for four, four quarters. They've had some tough games this year, some close games. Um, they've had some really good defensive games, honestly. Um, and they've especially the last couple of games been starting to figure it out a little bit more. And you can kind of see the the confidence they play with. Um, and so it's a good opportunity for us to to see what we're made of as an offense going against a really good defense. Jaron, let's uh, do our part and give you some BYU Sports Nation karma to take to the Boise Blue, man, and, and turn this thing around and get BYU going back in the right direction. We appreciate the time, as always, and I wish you the best of luck up north in Idaho. Thank you. BYU quarterback Jaron Hall on BYU Sports Nation. Explosive plays are the one thing he isolated as that has to change for us to win games. And that's a tall task against Boise State, Jaron, because this is a team – that is giving up 4.2 yards per play on average. Yep. They surrender yep. first downs on third downs just 28% of the time, and they only give up 133 pass yards a game. They, I just looked it up as you are talking because I was thinking about it. Uh, you, plays of 10-plus allowed this year. They are number one by 16 plays. Wow. How about 20 yards? Just looking around. Fourth best. Okay, Jaron Hall has not been the same since the Utah State game. You asked him about the last two weeks. He says he's not hurt. Obviously, something's up. First five, last four. You look at the numbers. Pass yards, big difference, 86 yards. Yards per attempt, 1.5 different. And then he's down about 11% in the completion percentage. Sub-150 quarterback rating in three or four. He's clearly not the same dude. It doesn't help that the injuries keep piling up around him as well. But obviously, since Utah State, when he got banged up and that shoulder got hurt, he's not been the same dude. And so hopefully, and BYU saying, hey, he's healthy. No, he's good. And he's saying it as well. Hopefully Saturday we see that in manifested on the field. Against Arkansas, uh, he was good, yeah, right? But yeah. the other three games, not as much. So hopefully that guy and that offense shows up against a very good Boise State defense. Maybe the BYU offense can do what Oregon State did, which is, like Jaron said, be able to run the ball and be explosive. Oregon State had several explosive plays in that game. Also, Boise State turned the ball over a bunch, and that's kryptonite for any football team. Yes. Maybe the BYU defense takes it away and, and creates more opportunities for the offense. Maybe rainy conditions need, play into that. You need a little something, right, to go and win this game. 
And so maybe BYU shows up and wins it, and then we can work towards what we hope is some kind of salvaging of the yes. season. I don't think it can and be BYU salvaged. BYU repay but. what Boise did last year in Provo. <laughs> when Boise was a 10-point underdog, and it rained a little bit, BYU and it got weird, team. and BYU lost that game on their home field. I would love to see BYU repay the favor. Last one in a while. Yep. Maybe ever. Sure. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is on demand, featuring the coach, Lorenzo Fawatea, Lopini Cato in the film room, and the newest Deep Blue with former Cougar, uh, former Bronco turn Cougar quarterback, Cade Fennigan. Search Sitake show on the BYU TV app. Plus, the first college football playoff rankings are out. BYU's not in them. They've been in them for a long time. What? How long until BYU puts together another streak of being in those college football playoff rankings? We'll discuss that next on BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-size truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. Before I was a coach at BYU or before I was even a player, I was a BYU fan. We've got great energy as a team, but we have even better energy because of our fans, and it's absolutely magical. When you hear the crowd roar, that makes it more exciting, more of an adrenaline rush. The roar of the crowd, you can feel it on the floor, you can feel that energy, and it's unlike anywhere else in the country. BYU sports, it's all about the fans. Yo, what up? Make sure you follow BYU Sports Nation on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jeremiah Spencer. Time to whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Marisk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. First college football playoff rankings of the season are out. BYU streak of 11 straight polls is over. Spencer, how long before BYU makes an appearance in the CFB rankings? Ooh. Jaron Hall comes back next year and BYU starts 3-0. No. It's not going to be next year, most likely. Neither of those things will happen. Yeah, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. It's not going to be next year. I hope for both. It just it, the transition into the Big 12 is going to be really, really tough with the new quarterback. Uh, we're trying to get to a bowl eligibility situation for BYU next year. Yeah. Probably, we're probably two years away from that. 24. Yeah, before BYU appears in the college football playoff rankings again. 24, BYU starts 3-0. After a win against Utah. <laughs> well, in, the problem uh, is, game three. you got to be good in week eight because that's when they come out, right? It's true, you're right. Nah, might be 25. <laughs> we're, probably, we're probably two years, at least two years away. From it might that. be a minute. Yeah, and that's okay. BYU's got to build to that. It's, it's okay. BYU's got to build to that. All right, pick six previews ranks the top defenses in the Power Five based on opponent adjusted per play statistics. Mm -hmm. Of the 66 Power Five teams, BYU's defense is currently 55th. BYU considered P5 in this. Okay, so 55th, eh, not great. But Stanford is ranked 56th, Jerem. Does this guarantee a win on the farm at Stanford? No, no tree uh, guaranteed a farm. No, no, this doesn't guarantee anything. Nothing is guaranteed right now with BYU football. No, these Stanford and BYU are, that is a very, very intriguing game. Because Stanford has struggled on offense. They're physical, have a physical defense. They beat Notre Dame. They've lost some head scratchers. Like, 
They should have beaten Oregon State. They blew it at the end. I hate so much that it's probably headed to a scenario where BYU is five and six and has to beat Stanford to get to a bowl game. That's kind of what. That's kind of the direction that feels like we're going. I kind of expect that. Uh, I would be surprised and happily surprised if BYU wins this weekend. Beat Boise and State. don't even worry about it anymore. Beat, beat the beat whole Utah city Tech and then your bowl eligible. And the Broncos. Manuel yes. Acho says Fred Warner is the best linebacker in the NFL. Is Acho wearing blue goggles or does this still hold? No, it absolutely holds. I saw a video yesterday called Fred Warner a heat-seeking missile. I saw the same video. You probably retweeted it. I was like, dude, <laughs> heat he, he, he goes 30 yards across the field and just dives after the guy and hits launches, him in air. Just launches. Like, Fred Fred is way better than we thought he'd be in Fred's the NFL. Incredible. Like, at BYU, he was an outside backer, and he was really good. Like, top three rounds kind of guy. But in the NFL, this guy's been a top five pick kind of performance. I mean, it's been unbelievable. No, he's not wearing blue goggles. It's been awesome. He's calling what he sees. Like, Fred was on the NFL's top 100 players. It's this not year. a hot take to think he's no. still the best man. No, not at all. He's still he's in that all space. He's all Fred. Like, in a year or two, he's, he's probably out of that because you only maintain that level of greatness for so long. But Fred's been amazing. I mean, Bobby Wagner did that for a long time, right? The Utah yeah, State guy. Yeah, absolutely. Fred's Nine, kind of in that same Fred, area. Has Fred had the 99 Madden thing? I don't think, right? No. Not yet. Okay, once he gets to that level, it's okay. even higher, bro. He's he's the best. Li- who's better than Fred Warner, linebacker in the NFL right now? Middle linebacker specifically. Yeah, who's better? I don't know. He might be the best. Coach. Tyler Algier, speaking of NFL guys from yep. BYU, is ninth among all BYU alumni in NFL rushing yards, now compiling 324 in his rookie season. Five of the players ahead of him are former BYU quarterbacks. Can we name them? together. Okay, let's talk through this. So, obviously Steve Young. Yes. Taysom Hill. Yep. Uh, I'm thinking Jim McMahon. Jim McMahon I, we have not looked lot. this up, no, but Jim, I was just doing Jim some Jim had to run a lot. Jim had to run a lot. Uh, Walter Payton not, wasn't always doing that. Um, I, I wonder if Zach Wilson has more than that, probably, so Zach's right? Zach's had some explosive yep. plays running the ball, right? Yeah. Um, and is then, he, is it is it Ty Detmer? Ty was in the league forever. He was in the league a long time. I wonder if, I bet it's Ty. The other name I'd throw in the mixture is Virgil Carter. Would like to run a lot as well back in the day with the Browns. Sure. Did he run more than 324 yards with the Browns? Could have. I don't I know. I okay. Kinda, okay. So, let's, let's so we said Young, Hill, McMahon, Detmer, Wilson. Or are we, we going to throw on Carter over Detmer? No, no Carter. We'll, okay. we'll include Detmer. Because right, this doesn't include sacks in the NFL, right? Super right. Young, McMahon, oh, Hill. Mark Carter Wilson. is fourth. Oh, Mark Wilson. What? Okay. Mark so we Wilson. only got three of the five. How about that? How about Steve Young ran for 4,200 plus yards? So Zach Wilson has less than 324 rushing yards right now? Probably because he's been injured. In the two years? Yeah, that probably makes sense. 229 for Zach Wilson. Look at look at Taysom, by the way. Let's keep an eye on that. He might get 132 on Monday night football against the Ravens and oh. pass Jim. Let's go. Look at Steve, dude. <laughs> That's why he's the GOAT in the NFL. Unbelievable. Not even close. Mark Wilson. Shocker there. Mark Wilson. We said Wilson. We just didn't have the right Wilson. Okay, after further (laughs) review, breaks down the ECU game, looks ahead to Boise State, not to be confused with Boise State. Don't be that guy. Check it out on demand on the BYU TV app. Did missing four defensive starters against ECU impact the game? Oh, I don't know. Probably. We're at that point. Up next, we look into the BYU basketball crystal ball. Okay give you our season projections Ooh. next. This is BYU Sports Station. Are you going 22-7 and seven like Ken Bob? Hey. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner.
If you're looking to build your brand awareness and increase market share as BYU moves into the Big 12, this is the place, BYU, BYU Athletics. Athletics. We can provide the tools you need to make sure your company is seen and heard. BYU Athletics is where you can align your products and services with loyal fans that cheer for our Cougars. And they can also help your business win. Learn more about what a partnership with BYU Athletics and your company will look like. After all, this is the place. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. I was four years old when I left Zambia. My dad was born in Shila in the south of Italy. My mom is from Slovakia. We haven't really talked about it, never, not once. My dad doesn't really talk about his life in Serbia. I just really want to know who he is. And then discover who am I. <laughs> Stay moving, I don't wait round. Coming for the bar, that's a takedown. There ain't really nothing left to say now. And we got them on their heels, throw the fade now. Yeah, watch how I step. Cause you ain't really wanna like that. Oh, you ain't know I was wanna like that. I get the ball, I'ma run it right back. Hoop season is upon us. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B. It is time that we make our projections for the 2022-2023 BYU men's basketball season. Projections have not gone well for your boy this year, so uh, this will be interesting. Okay. Maybe basketball will be better. <laughs> so terrible. we've picked a bunch of what we feel are relevant categories. Go. We're going to have some fun with this. Beginning with... This is fun! The leading scorer for BYU basketball this season. Who you got, Jaron? Boost. 13.8 points per game. Okay. Foose will lead the way. So Foose was, what, 9.6 points per game last yep. year? Yep. Or do you think he's going to take a four point lead the four-point lead game? All right. Yep. Rudy Williams averaged 14.7 points per game at Coastal Carolina last year. Mark Pope wants him to shoot more. He has said as much often. I think Rudy will get the message, take more shots. And he's got that three-point shot, which I think gives him the edge over Foose. What do you mean? Foose went one for eight last year from three. <laughs> I'm going to go Rudy, who shot 44% from the three-point line a year ago. It would go. 14 Rudy. Yeah, 14.2 points per game. A little bit of a dip, but he's, he's going to be good this year. Leading three-point percentage guy, minimum 20th century. Spencer Johnson. Mm, you would go with the Spencer. How can I not? Especially when he has shot 41% and 39% in his two previous seasons with BYU basketball. I think he's going to be right at 40% and lead the way. I go Rudy Williams Ooh. at 39%. Okay. Okay. Second leading rebounder because Boost is going to lead. Boost is going to lead the team yeah. in rebounds. He's it, a double double. He'll be a double double guy. So the second leading rebounder for you, Gideon George, 4.7. Gideon was the second leading rebounder a year ago at five even. I think he's going to need to do even more. So I'm going to give him, I'm going to say 5.1. It'll be Gideon George, the second Gideon. leading rebounder. Great. Why do we have the same one? Uh, most fouls. My boy, Atiki Ali Atiki. <laughs> Here's why. Up the bench. He averaged 10 minutes a game last year. 10 minutes. He had 67 fouls. That's averaging 10 minutes a game. Nate Austin respects that game. <laughs> okay. He's going to play more. So he's yeah. going to have more fouls. Yeah. So his foul per minute ratio was the highest last year. I think it's going to remain the same. 82 fouls total for Atiki Ali Atiki. Foos will lead the way, but he needs to stay out of foul yes. trouble because he's the starting five, even though he's really a four, right, in terms of size. Atiki's going to play more. I hope he gets 15. Oh, for sure he's going to play more. He'll have more fouls. Yeah. It's okay. There's going to be a lot of fouls to go around. Okay. Wins versus St. Franzaga. We're including San Francisco in there still. We've shown a lot of respect. San Francisco. You wore your San Francisco guard Gonzaga. today. Gonzaga. Uh, <laughs> I, go, I go three. Three. I don't know where they come. I, I, I think, obviously, Saint, uh, San Francisco's in there. St. Mary's in there. I never really anticipated win versus Gonzaga. If it happens, that'll be great. Um, so but, we're thinking yeah. probably like seven opportunities if you throw in like maybe BYU gets St. Mary's or San Francisco even, in the West Coast Conference tournament. Perhaps even eight. Okay. So I, th I went off seven opportunities. Man, I, I think two. I, I, I put two. That's kind of that's kind of where I am with this BYU team. I just don't know. I'm not sure either. I hope all of these numbers are way higher than absolutely except for the, except for the foul. Yeah, two oh. two wins against St. Franz Zagreb. Quad one wins. Yikes. Again, this is a, the South the NCAA tournament lo committee looks at this. It's his road games against top 75, neutral top 50, and home games top 30. In okay. Okay. So I'm gonna go with two. 
I'm going to go with two okay. quad one wins okay. for BYU this season. Hopefully more. They probably need yeah. four to be bubbleish. I say three because I think you get like a like a San Francisco on the road kind of deal in there. And BYU You're hoping for a St. Mary or San Diego yes. State early. You get one of those in conference play. Maybe it's USC in the Bahamas, and you hope they're top 50. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with three at the end of the year. Yeah, I believe BYU had four last year total. Two quad one wins for me, which is kind of in line with two wins against St. Franzaga. Yeah, every, everything's great. Okay. <laughs> quad three and four losses combined. Tip, okay, Mark Pope has what? One of these in three seasons? I quad think? four loss. He's yeah. One quad four loss. Three and four. One loss, right? In there. I don't think he has many. I'm going two. I think there's two randos. The, those games on the road when it's the Thursday night, like at Pacific, and we're like, yep, this is a win, and it isn't always a win. Uh, I think there's two of those out there somewhere. I'm giving BYU more opportunity for, you know, slip-ups here. And, and this is just kind of like the overall feeling of my expectations for this team. And we'll get to that with the overall record in just a bit. But I say, th I say three. Okay. I don't think BYU's going to have a quad four loss, but they'll probably have two to three quad three losses. You just told me they're not making the tourney by that metric. Uh, I hate that. Regular season record. Out of 31 games. I think BYU is 19 and 12 going into the West Coast Conference Tournament. So not totally out of it, but mostly uh, it being the tournament. I go 21 and 10. I think they'll be a little bit better um, than that, but but uh, just by two games. Yeah, Ken Palm. So if Ken Palm were projecting 31 games, you would think he'd be like 23 and 8, maybe. Yeah. Perhaps. Because he's 22 and 7. Or not maybe he goes 21 and. Games. Yeah, yeah, maybe he goes. Wow. But I'm, I'm certainly conservative. Okay, West Coast Conference finish. It's BYU. Finish. We're all conservative. West Coast Conference finish. Where are they going to finish in the conference? Third, 10 and 6. Above San Francisco. Maybe tied. Okay. They, Which is the preseason, the preseason poll coaches tied San Francisco. Pick, yeah. uh, BYU finishing fourth, 9 and 7 in conference. And that answers the question, NCAA or NIT? NIT for me. Yeah, I, I'm, I have no expectation for this team. If they make the tourney, I'll be surprised. That would be, be great. Awesome. I think maybe we're a year out, right, from building to that. But, yeah, I, I would say probably NIT as as currently constituted. Maybe BYU catches fire and they – like Waterman and Robinson and Williams are incredible and the freshman off missions are awesome and maybe BYU puts together this magical year. I just think right now uh, that's probably a fair expectation from the jump. This team's going to shoot a ton of three-pointers, Jerem. If you that can be said of literally every team in college basketball. If you make a ton of three-pointers – that's that is the and BYU should be the best shooting team in the world. Why? Because gyms are in the churches. I mean, <sighs> time for a four game losing streak to end at Boise State. BYU Sports Nation game day. We'll get you ready for that on Saturday, 5 Eastern time. Spencer live from the blue is going to wear all blue. So you will we'll only <laughs> see his head. That's coming up on Saturday. Uh, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> and has BYU football dropped all the way to the bottom of the Big 12 plus four power rankings. Find out next. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. 
Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked them down pretty quickly. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Shows on demand, download free apps and subscribe right and review to the pod. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Let's roll out our totally unbiased Big 12 plus 4 power rankings. Let's go. I've got some great news, BYU fans. Um, the Cougars are not on the bottom of the list. <laughs> At number 13. They have dropped to number 13. Yeah. Only Iowa State falls below BYU. They're 0 5 in league. This metric. Okay. Um, top, TCU yeah. is the top team. Kansas State, Oklahoma State, UCF number four. Yeah. Texas number five. Metrics love Texas. Texas is number one in the super ranking. It's seven again, seven metrics that I've combined for an average. TCU deserves to be one, but they're giving up 33 a game the last four. They will lose soon, Spence. Okay. Kansas State second in the super ranking as well. Oklahoma State seems great, but that 48 nothing loss to Kansas State, not great last week. Ugh. And uh, BYU is the worst team in the super ranking, 67 right now. Not looking good. Yikes. Now, if BYU beats Boise State, maybe they jump back up towards the top. Maybe ten. they get to One number can 10. aspire. One can aspire. Absolutely. Let us let us inspire and aspire. All of them. And first fire. Our question yeah. of the day. With 42 different starters this season for BYU football. 42. Third most in FBS. How much should that impact the win-loss results? Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX. Healthcare Elevated. At Grizzfather answers on Twitter. What's up, Grizz? Anyone who doesn't think losing that many players, starters, affects wins and losses is blind. When even your twos are banged up and you are relying on third team and fourth teamers, it's going to impact results. Again, yeah. I, I mentioned Jaron Hall not being right affected the Notre Dame game. BYU being without their four best defensive players against ECU. It's hard to overlook like, okay, that probably impacted the game a little bit. Oh, for sure it did. We just don't want to use it as an excuse. No, but honestly, no, this, we don't. this team is more like UAB than the, the, Baylor, the team that played Baylor. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. McKay Bundy, number 11 tonight for Ottawa, is uh, a guy that uh, is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, went to a BYU baseball camp, enrolled, is stuck, well, almost enrolled in BYU in 2019, got into school. He's going to play on the Marriott Center floor and fulfill a dream I love, tonight. I love that. The That's Ottawa cool. spirit. The spirit. Our thanks to today's guest, quarterback Jaron Hall. Sorry to Dennis, we ran out of time, dog. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton, and another shout-out to Bart Jepson. We'll see you tonight for men's basketball pregame coverage at 8 Eastern, BYU women's soccer on the radio. Go Cougs!